Anything to feel something new High if I fall, no, I did it going on in At the time of my life, right for the squad no, Lights through the fog, but we made it, yeah Happy good by the morning I feel like I'm falling Real life, real rare, I'm on edge I make noise, they all is No cap, all facts Eyes low, but I'm still woke No patience, heart glacier Can't see me, I'm the young ghost Phone blaring, overbearing The blessing that I overcharge Got these rap niggas' eyes open glaring Cause they over jealous, I'm so overzealous Whiskey side with the rosemary And used to want it, not a whole step And that was back before I could afford a care Now we on course, I took the tour to Paris I blew up the bag, they hit me as bad The guy from the racks that they chastised They can fast die, telling mad lies Going bad, tell them get they act right On my last life, I poured a potion, I been out of orbit I've been moving slowly, got me going up, they got my head clouded I've been good by the morning At the time of my life Right for the squad, no lights through the fog But we made it, I've been good by the morning I feel like I'm falling It feel like I'm falling Hi, I'm Daniel Madison, welcome back Thanks for being here, appreciate it in this video, I'm gonna teach you that mad flourish that you saw in the introduction. I'm also gonna do a two deck giveaway to one of my subscribers, somebody watching this video right now. Inside this beautiful Charlie Madison box, two decks of blue remedies. I'm gonna open one of them and sign it. And I'm gonna sign this box too. Then I'm gonna pick somebody watching this video and gift these playing cards to that person. You have to be subscribed, but if you're not subscribed, what? Give the subscribe button a little tickle. Slap it with your sausage if you want. Just make sure you subscribe. Details coming at the end of this video. Over the past few videos, I've been teaching a few cardistry moves from my old school repertoire. And there's no school like the old school. And who's the headmaster, Charlie? That is correct. This flourish does not interrupt the order of the deck. So if the deck is, is in brand new deck order to begin with, once you do the flourish, it's still gonna be in the order when you finish. It looks so much more difficult than it actually is. And with this video, with my teachings, I'm gonna help you learn this very quick and make it look as good as you possibly can. So without further ado, grab yourself a deck of playing cards, come and join me at the card table. I'm Daniel Madison and this is Tenet. The response to the Blue Remedy so far has been really wild, like Schneider and I are both very um, overwhelmed. I don't like using that word, but, but we're very happy with uh, the feedback so far and the reaction to it. Um, so this one I'm gonna sign for somebody watching. Uh, let's put some mad respect on the... Uh, Charlie, gold on blue just looks beautiful. Check that out. Officially the first ever deck of blue remedies that I've signed. My lines, uh, you've already got access to yours. I'm gonna sign this box too. There we go. Details at the end of this video. We're gonna use the red, the Scarlet Madison Advocates to learn this flourish with. And as I already said in the introduction, the introduction, the order of the deck does not change throughout this flourish. That playing card that pops out and then goes back into the deck, that also returns to its original position, but we can also take advantage of that playing card. We can have that as a revelation of a selected playing card, but we'll deal with that once we've learned the actual flourish. If you see me walking down the street, minding my business, and you shout offensive words to me like, yo, Grindelwald, that's not offensive to me. That's not an insult, that's a compliment. So thanks. Try harder next time. Especially considering that me and my nine gag farm, I've got Johnny's back all the way. Bang, bang. You know, the internet's such a wonderful place. The power of unity is a is truly wonderful thing, especially when you can head over to change.org and sign a petition so that a certain actress does not feature in Aquaman 2, which nobody's gonna watch it anyway, so I don't know why I'm talking about this. I'm talking about films because when I first started publishing and teaching magic and cardistry online about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, dare I say 20 years ago, Charlie. All of the titles, all of the publications have these really over-the-top pretentious titles like um, Contraband, 
collateral. Then um, Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make Optimus sense Prime. to the thing that was being taught, but it was kind of a almost like a, a really bad approach to a marketing idea or not. Uh, it's funny to look around the industry, the same industry today, and still see it happening. Not ironically, like calling this tenor Tenor. is in, in a way kind of poking fun at that and, and making fun of that, but also. The video that I called Tenet where I used the pink advocates, I did that because it was more about the edit, more about reversing the footage and seeing what uh, flourishes look good backwards as well as forwards, but Tenet makes sense too. If you know about the film, Tenet makes sense for this flourish because of the order, because the order, yes, it does mix up while the flourish is happening, but it does go back to the original order. No spoilers. Let's get straight into the teaching. This is a tough one and I have rigged up an over the shoulder camera, I listen, I'm in the comments and I'm listening and a lot of people were asking for an over the shoulder point of view, especially you Uncle Phil, I'm listening, I'm always listening and I always appreciate um, your guidance and your feedback. So I hope this camera angle helps for everybody watching and everybody following along. So if you wanna start this with your deck of cards in order the same way that I'm doing, it's really satisfying when you get to the end and it's still in order. We're gonna start this flourish by breaking the deck into three packets. The first packet is the bottom about 10 playing cards and I'm gonna hold them between my thumb and finger free of my left hand just like this. Now if I extend and hold it like this, you can see that the grip is here and I'm gonna curl this back in to kind of a dealer's grip, upper dealer's grip like so. Now I'm gonna start like this so I'm getting prepared right from the beginning. The next packet is also at the bottom of the deck, another 10 playing cards about. Finger three of my right hand, I'll say it properly this time Charlie, is on the index corner, so it's on the outside, the upper outside like this. And then it's the opposite corner, the opposite index that's gonna pivot against the power of my hand right here in the same corner that this packet is at like this, so I'm gonna break it off like this. All I'm gonna do is pull back like this, lift this packet up, packet one up, packet two is the middle packet, is here. And then the bottom packet, I'm gonna extend finger three and the thumb, so it comes away from the rest of the deck like this. You will feel finger one on the corner of that packet. Now start to turn this packet over, so it's face up and then face down. That's one of the moves that's happening in this flourish. Uh, so you can see that bit here like this. So notice there is a bit of a break because finger one has to go back to turn that card again. Don't try and do it all in one go. So it looks like this. And it's gonna end back in the original position. So here, here. As that's happening, that middle packet that's trapped between finger three of the right hand and the palm, notice finger two of the right hand is protruding or is hanging over the top deck, the top packet. I'm gonna grab the top of the middle packet and spin it upwards like this. Now I'm gonna spin it once more and notice finger one goes on top of that playing card here. So now this packet is fully clipped between finger one, two, and three like this. I'm gonna keep that pivot point right here though on my left hand. As soon as I hit this position, finger one of the right hand is gonna push forward but only on the top playing card. This separates that playing card from that packet. Now that top playing card is pinched between finger three and finger two of my right hand, I'm gonna let the lower packet fall into my hand and I'm gonna push that middle packet into my thumb crotch, Charlie, like this, and my thumb's gonna press down on that. As I pull my right hand away, I take that top playing card along with the packet that I'm originally holding onto. Finger one of the deck, of the packet underneath is gonna press outwardly and it pushes that packet back over the top like this, but I'm not gonna let it fall. I'm gonna catch it on my thumb like this. At this point, in the right hand, finger one is gonna press down on that card, so I give myself a little bit of freedom to move this playing card around. Looks fairly pretty. In my left hand, I'm gonna execute a revolution cut. If you don't know that, there are so many tutorials on YouTube teaching that, but I'll show you the basics right now. It looks like this, I'm already in position. Finger one goes to the side. I let go with everything else, and then finger three is gonna curl all the way over to the other side, and I'm gonna allow that packet to rotate and go underneath. As this is happening, I take this single playing card and place it here as those two packets close. Notice how it, it, the position it's in now. Finger one underneath, thumb on the side, finger two here. Now I'm just gonna pinch that playing card between finger one and my thumb here so that I can bend it like so. As I'm doing this, my right hand held onto the packet like this. I'm gonna straddle that packet like so. 
press down with my thumb and execute a one-handed fan as I move over here, touching my body with the entire packet. So I'm gonna go over here now, it's down to a bit of, of, of target practice, <laughs> target practice with that pop-out playing card. Now, if I tilt my hand inward a little like this, finger one and my thumb of the left hand are gonna pinch that protruding playing card like so, and I'm gonna add enough pressure so that that playing card pops off of the end of my thumb. This is gonna cause that card to pop away from the packet and land on this fan packet over here like so. Once it lands, wherever it lands, I'm gonna take advantage of it. So wherever it lands, then I'm gonna decide what I do next. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. From this position, I'm gonna come over here and let that card slide off. That's now back to its original position, and I'm gonna close the fan by turning it over and then face down on top of the deck like this, and the deck is now in complete brand new deck order as it was from the beginning. At this point, based on the comments from the past two tutorials, I'm gonna do the whole flourish very slow, no talking, just so that you can follow along with the over the shoulder point of view. So it's important at this point that we go through the whole thing again. There's quite a few notes along the way, so I'll, I'll try to answer every possible question that could be asked at this point. So 10 playing cards, 10 playing cards or thereabouts. Now I am turning these both at the same time. If I move, if I move both my arms upward as if towards this camera, if I move them both forwards, it, it adds a little bit of depth and it brings the flourish to life right from the beginning. Also, if I twist my left hand, more like this and more um, uh, clockwise, it makes that rotating packet look much more alive than it would if you just kept your, uh, your hand still. This is what I mean. So I'm gonna come over here like this, then I'm gonna rotate this packet. Notice how my hand's moving to make the packet look like it's doing more than it actually is. That is um, a bit of advice from Bruce Lee, uh, famous cardist. Now I'm gonna talk, push the top playing card over like this. As soon as it's released from that packet, I'm confident as long as my thumb, thumb crotch can grab this packet here, I'm confident that I can start moving this playing card around. I like moving this up and down, um, not too much, but just in a way that can be noticed. Again, if your audience is looking head on at you, it might be worthwhile holding this packet up like this and moving that card downwards like this. If you do it straight forward, you can't really see what's going so on. Those two packets spin, big circle with that four hearts as it goes into the, the revolution cut. Then at this point, the way that I'm gonna do that fan with this packet is also very kind of flamboyant and lively because I'm holding it up, up here. This is a natu natural position it's landed in. So if I straddle it in a way that kind of looks flourishy, which is the whole point of cardistry anyway, then it looks much bigger than what it is. Now the pop out move, this is gonna take more practice than any other part of this flourish because there's a very strong chance that that card's gonna bounce in a direction that you don't want it to go in and you don't really have as much control as you might think over that bounce. When I fan this packet and I put it over here, I'm putting it against my body on purpose because if I pop this card hard enough, there's a chance that it's gonna come and hit me in my own body above here, in which case it doesn't matter because it can fall and then land on the fan playing cards. I have to make sure that my left hand is tilted inwards and then upwardsly like, upwardly like this so that that card has a chance of flying away and not hitting my hand, not hitting my sleeve, but coming upwards so that it can go down like this. Notice how it's landed not even on that, not even on that fan, it's landed up here on my hand but it's still landed in a position where I can control it, where I can manipulate. So I'm just gonna tilt that forward over so it slides off onto the deck, close the fan on top, and that was awkward, but the flourish is complete. I do like to extend this flourish sometimes at this point. If you end like this, which we'll get to in a second, I can put my hand here and then pop that plank card out like this. It lands in my hand and then I can continue the flourish go into using this card for a trick, um, all sorts. I'll tell you how to get to that now. So if we do the flourish, when I get to this point, I'm gonna control that playing card so that it lands over, protruding the edge of the deck. So when I close this fan, that playing card is now left sticking out. So from this position, I can then continue the move 
and the card comes over here into my hand and then I can do something with it. However, this does take that card out of the deck so it has interrupted by one playing card the order of the deck. If you want that playing card to be a revelation or to be a controlled playing card, it does get a little bit tricky, but it is entirely completely possible. And it's all about having a break, knowing how to hold a break in the deck on that selected card. My King of Diamonds is usually always on top of the deck. If I pull that to the, to the position where I want to reveal it with the Ten of Flourish, it needs to be about two, fifth, two, two fifths of the way down into the deck. So I'm gonna put it about here, about two fifth, th fifths. It's about two thirds down into the deck. So with the King of Diamonds here, I'm gonna simply just hold a, a, a pinky break, a very obvious pinky break, and then break that bottom packet in half like this. As soon as I pull away, the King of Diamonds is right here. This card is the King of Diamonds. So now when we do the flourish, the King of Diamonds is now here. Now when I come back into the deck like this, this point, still the King of Diamonds protruding. Now for the revelation, put my hand here, the card pops out and then I can reveal it. If you don't want to go to those efforts of having to have a break in the deck, you can simply have the playing card that you want to control on top of the deck. Then whichever playing card is, is protruding, is popped out of the deck, which you're not going to have much control over at this point. Let's just see what playing card it is. So remember the King of Diamonds is on top. We have the Two of Hearts. I'm going to pop it out once again. At this point, I can either do a top change, I can put it on top, do a double lift, I won't recommend that. My favorite thing at this point would be to reveal the Two of Hearts and then go into some kind of color change like color. But that's up to you, that's up to your creative freedom. I teach that color on my channel, I'll leave a link to that in the video description. So that was and that is Tenet. This video is always gonna be here, so you can always come back to this video for reference if you're struggling to learn. If you have any suggestions uh, of ways that I can improve my teachings on this channel for my videos, just let me know in the comment section. I'm trying to spend as much time as I possibly can with you in the comments. Now for the good part, the giveaway of the Remedies playing cards. Two blue decks, one sealed, one signed, in a beautiful sign box. Going away to one of my subscribers, you have to be subscribed to my channel. Get into the comment section, put a smile on my face, make me laugh, and I will choose a winner in the next video. Thanks for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it, and I hope you have fun learning tenor. I am Daniel Madison. See you next time.